Welcome everyone to Melfuzz TV, I am Peter and today I'm going to be talking about Silo, Season 1 Episodes 4 and 5, they're called Truth and the Janitor's Boy, respectively. So, these two episodes kind of deal with Juliet's first day on the job as Sheriff, uh, the resistance she faces, and uh, then some like murder investigations for murders that we've already had, but also more that we get in these two episodes, which... I will say I'm not as I'm not as enthusiastic about these two episodes uh, as I was the last couple, and I think primarily it's because it's 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 focusing in more on the stuff that I didn't think was as strong, which is the murder mystery and the conspiracy side of things. Judicial's up to something, you know. What's Sims? You know, Common's character. What's he up to? What's he doing? All that stuff I think was the less interesting part of the show. And sadly for me, these two episodes almost entirely are leading into that. Pretty much both of these episodes are largely about Juliet, you know, as Sheriff, investigating things. And the investigation elements, honestly, so far are not that exciting. They're not really all that, you know, tantalizing or anything like that. Um, We've got red herrings, we've got... You know, you know, we have some chases and stuff, but no, nothing super, uh, so nothing super engrossing. I think, I think a big example for me is like all of the episode four. She's looking for the hard drive and the files that Holston's had, right? And she wants to continue to research what happened to uh, her friend. And early in the episode, it sets up this noises in the vents, and then at the end of the episode, you know, like almost right at the end, she is able to, like, she realizes that that's where the, the stuff is hidden, where the files are hidden, and there's, like, a string, and she pulls it up, and it's, you know, it's this big moment at the end of episode four. There's a scene in episode five when she goes back down to the bottom, and she's talking to Martha, you know, the old tech lady that sort of helped raise her, and she mentions finding these files, but she basically admits that, oh, there's nothing really in them that she never, like, already knew, and it just kind of felt like, oh, oh well... That doesn't feel that important anymore. It, it felt like that was like a big point at the end of episode four, and episode five kind of just retroactively made it feel not all that big of a deal. Uh, maybe there'll be some stuff in there that she's not realized, or it'll like, you know, something will come from it later, but it, it did kind of feel like immediately not a lot came from finding those files. So, like, not everything is feeling super. I think, I think, I guess what I'm getting at is that. The, I feel like the show is like slowed down into kind of a mundane cop drama, uh, where we're investigating murders and someone's covering them up. And in episode five, you know, she she's kind of smart, right, Juliet. She kind of figures out that someone's been set up as a fall guy, as a patsy, and she's able to figure out who the real killer is. In so much that the real the person who actually did the killing of of Marnes, we'll get to him dying in a bit, but. Um, and that leads to a chase scene and all that. But of course, he's not the one who, like, he's working for someone, right? Clearly, Sims and all that stuff is further up the food chain and what's really going on. But I'm not really all that excited by, like, Sims' secret, like, organization or whatever he's doing to protect the silo. You know, he has a whole big speech in episode five about how his father, he thought he was just a janitor, but secretly there was other stuff going on. He had more power than that. He was doing the important work of the silo. And I'm just, I'm not really feeling that stuff. Um, I think just because it feels a lot more generic, uh, and I think that's the other problem with this murder mystery stuff, is that it kind of feels like all of the stuff that made the show more interesting, especially in the first couple of episodes, was the overall idea of the silo, and the overall mystery of what this place is, uh, and some of the some of the things that make it unique to, to be in. Um... And there are some small details of that, like one that comes up towards the end of episode five is the idea that they don't even know what stars are. Like there was this guy that Juliet keeps seeing in the cafeteria who is looking at the sky at night through the big, uh, the big screen, and he's basically starting astronomy from scratch. He's, he's saying, hey, there's these lights in the sky, I don't know what they are, but I'm noticing that they're moving, you know, they're gradually like rotating around, and he's sort of making charts based on it. 
but they don't even know the word stars. And I was like, oh, that's actually, that's, that's, it's probably the most interesting thing I thought happened in all of episode five was the discussion about what these mysterious lights in the sky are. Um, which also ties into, uh, in episode four, like, it comes up that her name's Juliet, and it's from a play, and I immediately t- sort of thought that was a bit weird. I'm like, wait a minute, they know what Romeo and Juliet is? Because, you know, that's clearly from the before times, but it comes up later in the episode that they don't actually know who William Shakespeare is. Uh, they, they don't know who wrote the play. They, there's almost, like, rumours of... It's almost that sort of thing where the story's been passed down, and it survived the rebellion, and it survived the wipe of everything through people just, like, telling the story or something like that. So... In the same way that there's like old fairy tales and things that we don't really know who wrote them just because they're so old and they've been passed down for so long, that's kind of what Romeo and Juliet's become to this group of people. That's an interesting little slice of science fiction. That's a little interesting kind of idea concept of thinking about how things from our from our world, and it's already something that's old to us, but something that would like over time might fade into more obscurity. Uh, especially in this case where a more specific set of circumstances has put them in this this bottle of a world. But, yeah, so, uh, like, uh, some interesting details, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, but the actual, like, just, like, Juliet being the sheriff and investigating the crimes, and Sims and Co. having some other shady stuff going on, um, isn't really doing all that much for me. And I, I think um, what one of the... So episode four especially, I think had a couple things that I really didn't like. Um, I didn't really like the flashbacks to Juliet's childhood. Um, while they set up in the previous episode that she had left her father as a thirteen-year-old and that she'd lost her sibling and mother, I think the actual scenes playing out were unfortunately a, were detrimental to to my my perception of that story, mainly because. I don't think the, the the kid actor was just kind of okay. I actually think the father's not a great actor. Um, but the other bigger problem I had with those scenes is that ultimately, it kind of felt like there wasn't like a big driving push that sort of really made her like snap and say, "This is when I'm going to leave." I felt like I was building up to something, and then she kind of decides to leave after effectively one fight with her dad. And it didn't really, I, I didn't think we got to that point yet where she was going to go on the run. And it all just, like, it just, it felt like there was, it felt like there was more to it when it was just sort of left for me to, like, imagine, like, what, how, you know, that, that classic thing of sometimes what's in your head is actually far more interesting than the actual story they tell. Um, and I think that's the, 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 the problem that I'm also having with all this, this murder mystery stuff, is that it's a lot more straightforward and basic than I think that I think they want it to feel, <laughs> I, I guess. You know, like, the, the guy who kills Marnes at the end of episode four, like, he's just sitting with Sims at episode five. Um, it's also very predictable that Sims is going to kill him when he's, like, saying, hey, do you accept the responsibility of doing anything for the silo? Do you want to serve the silo with your life? Like, it was so painfully obvious he was going to push him over the ledge at the end of that scene. Um... Like to 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 a, to a point where I was actively like hoping they didn't just just so it wouldn't be so painfully clear that that's where the scene was going. I, like I I actually I hated that scene. <laughs> I thought Common's whole big speech about his father, um, setting up this secret like organization or whatever it is uh, that's behind the the the, the janitor's closet. <laughs> Whatever's going on here. Um, whether it's tied to judicial specifically or it's operating separately from judicial, I don't know. But either way, like I wasn't super enthralled with this, uh, this I don't know, reveal of of a potential organization. Uh, mainly because it doesn't really change that much. Okay, sure, judicial themselves may not be the ones that are actually chasing around and killing people. It may be something that Sims is doing on his own as the leader of this other separate group. He just happens to be in judicial. But it doesn't really change, ultimately, the tone or how everything feels in the show. Uh, and I think this is something that also really bothered me about episode 4, is it really bugged me that Deputy Marnes got killed. Because at this point, it feels relatively meaningless. 
it, it's so weird that every character who felt like a main character in the first episode is now dead. And on paper, you might think, oh, that, that, that'll, that'll feel shocking, that'll feel like anyone could go. But if anything, it was the opposite. By the time Marnes was about to die, like, I just thought it was painfully predictable that he was going to die in a way that didn't, I didn't care anymore. Like, obviously we had Rashida Jones and she died and that was the big sort of inciting incident. But I was genuinely surprised that then uh, her husband, Halston, like, also dies in episode two. I was, I was kind of shocked by that. And it was, okay, that's very bold, that's very brave. And then we get to the end of episode three and the mayor is poisoned and i wasn't sure if she was dead quite yet but obviously we start episode four and she's already dead we had one character left we had deputy marns he was the one character left that was like tied to all these other characters who clearly cared he's a wreck through episode four he's picking fights all these things i thought at this point okay this is important that him and and juliet are going to team up he doesn't like her at first of course but he's going to want the truth. He's he's the one who doubted Holston. He's the one who doubted everyone around him. But now that he's lost all these people, and particularly someone that he really cared for, I was like, yeah, okay. He's going to be the, the heart of this. Him learning to trust Juliet is going to be a big deal. It's going to be the the backbone of like why we're caring about them teaming up and that they've both lost someone. And on some level now, he can appreciate and understand her, even if at first he's like really pissy about the fact that she's now his boss when she has no experience and things like that but at the end of the episode he he's just you know he's he's killed and again it does that thing where it cuts away without a complete confirmation that he's dead it's the start of episode five where no he's dead there's a sheet over his body he's gone and i just kind of felt like we've just killed everyone and julia is an interesting enough character but like all of the other characters that were interesting are, are gone and it feels kind of weird. Uh, like, I feel like we've just killed all the characters off. Um, and I, I don't I, I don't know if I think it's a good choice to have done it to all of them. Like, obviously, like, Tim Robbins' character, he, uh, Holland, his character, he, he's, he's become temporary mayor. And it seems like he's starting to like Juliet maybe a little bit by the end of episode five, and maybe he's not in the whole evil conspiracy thing. But at the same time, when it comes to these evil conspiracy style plots, like, they could swerve us later on and all of a sudden, oh no, these people are all evil, they're all in on it, they've all been working against you the whole time. If anything, they probably want the twist where someone we think she can trust is actually one of the bad guys. That, that, that makes a whole lot of sense. But it feels so weird to me that, like, Holston's uh, assistant, you know, who works in the sheriff's department, kind of becomes this more prominent character all of a sudden and that's fine i have no problem with that if anything it was kind of interesting seeing her just kind of be casually racist about juliet coming from the the you know the down below she says i don't know what you you down there people eat uh or something like that and it, it came off as very like abrasive and offensive uh and it's like okay th th that's somewhat interesting but then episode five intro finally we've heard the name about this guy that they want to be sheriff for like four episodes now but they finally introduce Billings in episode 5, and it's sort of like, can Juliet trust him? Whatever. But I almost felt, like, annoyed we had to start doing that again, because I felt like we were just doing that with Juliet and, and Marnes. Like, I felt like we were just starting to get somewhere with them, and then we're reset back to zero. Do, can, we, can we have her trust Billings now? Like, are we going to get to a point where he feels like he's an ally? Eh, I, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like the show keeps resetting its characters in, in a weird way. Um, and sadly, it's, it's kind of not focusing on the stuff that's more interesting and the stuff that was was more appealing to me in those first few episodes. I, I will say, um, I think the cliffhanger for uh, episode five is pretty weak as well. Um, there's really not much to it other than just Juliet goes back down and like finds some of the old artifacts. I mean, yeah, there's an implication she's going to use something as bait to to look into the murder of George and all the other stuff, but uh, fundamentally, it just kind of ends with without much of a much of a rush of excitement. It it just kind of ends in a bit of a damper for me, a bit of a whimper. Um, and honestly, I, I kind of felt the same way about the end of episode four. I feel like ever since episode two, none of the endings have really felt like the big deals where it feels like it's really built to a climax. Uh, so I I am having some issues with the, the writing in that sense. I, I do think that some of the 
just the, the core like plots that we're really focusing on, which is the murder mystery stuff, um, just aren't really all that captivating. Um, and the, the frustrating thing is that it has introduced other elements that are captivating. Um, the, what this place is, what's really going on, what, uh, you know, who built these, this place, what secrets are there to find? Um, because the reason why I like that conversation about, like, what are those lights in the sky when talking about the stars, part of the reason why that excites me and the excitement of maybe them finding something on the camera or whatever is, like, what element of the old world, of our world, that we understand is going to completely shake their entire system? Like, if they see something, whether it's relevant to the, the building of the silo or just relevant to the world before everything changed, like, is there some some key thing that they just don't know about that we can't even think about or predict that's going to change how they think about everything? You know, because when he's talking about the lights in the sky and the stars and it's the, the, they're rotating, do the people in the silo even know the Earth is spinning? Do, do they know that? Do, do they know about oceans do they know like there's so many just key fundamental things about the planet that they might not know because the their entire civilization was effectively reset and is, and now they're in this silo and like how much does that belief like you know they use the word sky so they don't know what the sky is they still refer to the you know she says the lights in the sky so okay they have the word sky and it means sky that's cool but like there's so many things that they don't know and part of the fun almost for me is like, okay, I can't even predict other things they don't know. I mean, I just I just predicted a few potentially, but like, there's so many like things that could prop, prop, crop up and be like, oh, they just don't know about this. And that maybe shakes their way. And honestly, one of the, the interesting little details that comes up in episode five is that Martha mentions that there's two strict rules in the pact. One is they're not allowed to magnify beyond a certain level because it will reveal too much about the electronics or something like that like you know they don't want people looking too closely at things the other one is that and i this is something i brought up in episode one is they're not allowed to have any kind of mechanized way of traveling up and down the silo so no lifts no pulley systems no nothing that being a rule that the creators of the pact want everyone to follow is kind of interesting it's almost like by forcing people to travel slowly up and down, it lets the powers that are in control stay in control more because people can't do anything too uh, quickly. Maybe, the, or maybe it's just as simple as when there was a rebellion, there was some sort of lift system, and it allowed the rebe the the rebels to, I don't know, get to the top and fight easier or something. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, the simplest thing is just that it keeps the people down low, like, down low. Right, they really have to struggle to actually get anywhere, I guess. But I don't know. It's interesting. I mean, there's the little slice of life things, like the idea that they have this race to the top where people run up the stairs uh, as a competition. Fun. Those are little things that I kind of appreciate. Is like just texture of the world, just a little bit of fleshing out, a little bit of um, this is something this society does, and it makes sense given what they've got at their disposal. But I'll run up the stairs it makes sense. Uh, so I appreciate that, uh, but I think the best thing I would say about all this stuff with the investigation is mainly just, like, when everyone, the way everyone treats Juliet and sort of reacts to her being there, or reacts like they don't want to talk to her, and she kind of has to sit there and take the brunt of it and kind of parse how she's being treated and how much the people around her don't want her to be there. Those are a little tidbits that are interesting ju just from the sense of like maybe just rebecca fergus's performance that she's selling it very well that she's sort of she's adding some some layers and weight to these scenes where i can actually sense the uncomfort from that but a lot of the other stuff where it's the characters talking about the investigation and covering things up and looking for the murder um it's all a little bit uh dry i think um, so, sa sadly, I, I wasn't really into these two episodes all that much. I think they're easily the worst two episodes, uh, of the show so far. Um, and maybe this is partly down to taste, but I just don't think that the conspiracy and murder stuff is all that exciting, and I, I really can't believe they killed off yet another character. It, that, this might be the first show I have ever watched where I have a problem 
that 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 this specific problem that they're just killing off too many of their main characters like too quickly. I don't think I've ever felt that way about anything else I've ever watched. I can't think of a single show that's made me feel that way. But when when Marnes was confirmed dead at the start of episode five, I, I just sort of shrugged and went, wait, why? <laughs> why? Why did we waste all that time, like, setting him up then? Like, the first couple characters, it worked well enough because it was like, okay, they've got this, like, contained story and it's this motivation for everyone else. But at a certain point, we've already had enough motivation to, like, look into things. You've given me this character who cares about the other characters that have already died, and he can be this branch, you know, this, this bridge, rather, to to the new character who's there to investigate everything. Like, it felt like he was more valuable alive than he was dead, because like, he cared deeply about everyone who was already gone, and it affected him. And because he was the cynical one who didn't want to believe anything before, it may actually mean something when he does see proof and he sees evidence. Even in episode 4, when he starts to maybe like understand or slightly respect Juliet, it means something that he does start to maybe turn the corner as far as how he feels about her in the role of sheriff, or at, the, at least in the role of someone that's maybe worth helping and having around. So, yeah, I, I do. I, I think it's a weird choice to have another character killed. And yeah, maybe this is something that's just from the book uh, rather than the TV show, but it feels really weird to me. Um, and I just, I felt this, at, like, in episode 5, I'm just like, should I even bother, like, <laughs> get, getting invested in any other characters that aren't Juliet at this point? Because it feels like any of them could die at any point. And I'm sure they're not, because the thing is, is that I, I did notice that, that the actor, uh, Will Patton, was being credited as a special guest star, as was all the other characters who have died up until this point. Which is a, a little frustrating and a almost, like, you should have seen it coming kind of way anyway, just based on the meta of, like, knowing the credits. But it, it I just... I don't know. It just it annoyed me, and I, and I just I felt like w w I guess I'll just care about Juliet. And you know, they, they're, they're trying to escalate, you know, elevate some of the, the the characters around her. You know, the deputy from down below comes to see her, feels like he's going to be this constant ally. Same, obviously, with Martha. Um, but e even the the the, the assistant uh, who is kind of like racist towards her, and. But makes this deal because she wants to know who killed Marnes. Like, even she's leaving the station by the end of episode 5. And maybe we'll still see her in her new role and she'll still be someone who can become an ally or become a prominent figure in a different place. But if she's just gone, if she is just, just basically just done now and off the show because she's moved to a different station on a different floor, then it's effectively another death where I'm like, are you going to set up any characters that are going to stick around and be important? <laughs> <laughs> it just i don't know i at this point i'm I'm just i'm kind of expecting the guy who was looking at the stars to either disappear or die by the end of episode six because it feels like i'm almost like getting into a formula of just the people are constantly leaving or dying now at the end of every episode and that's kind of weird yeah that's a good point if you count her then that would if you count her as effectively a death if she is truly gone she's not actually dead obviously but if you count her as like is basically being the same thing that's a prominent character every episode that's gone and she's especially notable because she only kind of became prominent in episode four she became prominent after we already lost most of the other characters so we're already losing like a second wave of characters at this point uh which wouldn't be that much of a problem if it wasn't for the fact that i'm i'm, I'm grasping because i want like connections to be formed and people to like work together or, or something um so far, the investigation into Georgie's murder has been a bit of a slog, and no interesting details at all have been unearthed uh, in any way. Um, and if the drama is supposed to be like her, you know, Juliet gaining the trust of some of the people around her and trying to discern who she can trust, so far, none of those characters she's interacting with are remotely engaging enough to actually make it that exciting or or interesting. It is. You know, it's it's very straightforward TV stuff. I think the, the basically the biggest criticism I can get levy the middle portion of this show so far, uh, episodes four and five, is that it feels like a far more generic TV show 
than any of the the overall science fiction elements that were making it feel a, maybe a bit more you know atmospheric you know I, I, even in episode one I, I did critique that it didn't quite have as much atmosphere as i wanted but i was hoping it would build more towards it and episode two i feel like it was going in the right direction i think episode four and five is a, is a bit of a regression into just typical tv stuff so you know I, you know i'll check out episode six like i i, I want to give it more of a chance and hopefully it, it can win me over um but I don't think episodes four and five were particularly good. I don't think they were the worst things ever, but I, I just, I'm not that compelled by the, a lot of the ongoing plots right now in this show. Uh, the, the, the murder mystery stuff that it's actually focusing on, I think is quite dull. And I, I hope, I hope it, it can s- swing me around sooner rather than later. But, uh, Rebecca Ferguson's performance is pretty good. Like that, that is like one of the the few things right now that's really kind of holding my attention whenever she is on the screen. So I will compliment her. Um, I'll compliment some of the little smaller details about like the civilization here and like what they know, where some of their knowledge comes from. Um, but it's really, you know, it's it's almost like it's ignoring the cool concept that it has to do just the conspiracy stuff instead which is just so much more generic and simple and don't get me wrong i'm sure that it's going to tie into what this place is why this sort of system exists or at least i hope it would um i think there's a deep concern that if you get to the point where we we know like what this organization is and whatnot and if it does just feel like a completely separate entity uh and doesn't feel thematically linked to the, the core mysteries of the show uh, that could be a, a bigger problem for me as well. So, uh, mm-hmm. I'm not enthusiastic right now. I'm not. I want it to be. I want you know. I watched episode. I did both these episodes back to back. I watched episode four, and I was feeling kind of. Uh, but I was like, you know what? Hopefully, episode five will pick me up. And it was just one that I wasn't as into. But uh, you know, episode five, I might have liked even less than four. So, we'll we'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, I should get back to watching Yellow Jackets, I guess, because <laughs> I think that'll probably be more exciting. Uh, but that is Silo episode four and five. Um, if you're watching an episode four and five review of Silo, you probably disagree with me. You probably really like the show. Yeah, Ian Glenn kind of sucks in this. He's the actor who plays the dad. I know he's in other stuff. I think he's in Game of Thrones and shit. Um, I don't think he's very good here, sadly. Yeah. Oh well, there you go. That's uh, that's my thoughts on four and five. I'll look at episode six. I'll look at episode six, but I'm not feeling particularly optimistic right now. Uh, but that is the show. Thank you very much for uh joining me. Uh, hopefully it's not been too much of a downer. <laughs> Sometimes be careful what you wish for. Sometimes people ask me to like keep going with the show. And I'm not 100% confident in it. And then, like, I just feel guilty afterwards. Because I'll do, I'll do it, but then I'll be like, yeah, but you're just going to hear me shit on it. <laughs> Which is probably not what anyone wanted. People always want me to see how great the thing is that they like is. And sometimes I just, I'm not going to see it. I'm going to disagree. Because that's just how it goes sometimes. But uh, thank you very much for joining me. Let me know what you thought of these episodes in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get me on the Twitters at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. And of course, you can support all the content over at patreon.com slash mailfuzztv uh, for as little as, uh, well, anything per month. Uh, the first tier is though at $3. But uh, thank you very much. I will see you guys next time. Keep watching TV. Have you got any vanilla?